you know, most of Patricia Highsmith's novels are about sort of the criminal mind, and this is her only novel that's not about the criminal mind, it's about the amorous mind. And, um, and what's interesting about that is that actually in the 50s, being a lesbian was considered criminality. And also, me and Todd were talking about this, which is kind of interesting, is that when you're falling in love with someone, your mind kind of works the way a criminal's mind would. You kind of are constantly thinking about different scenarios and different things that could go wrong or different, you know, betrayals that could happen or getting caught doing this or am I going to run into this person here? Your mind kind of works in that way. It just works in overtime and it's constantly considering different scenarios that might happen or things that might go wrong or... Um, the other thing that's interesting about about the novel is that it's the the first and probably one of the only stories, especially of of that time, about a lesbian relationship that doesn't end in death or one of the people becoming straight or you know it has kind of a happy ending or at least an ambiguous ending and and that's really different for for that subject. Well, Therese is just a really young girl who's kind of, in a lot of ways, she's kind of alone in the world. You know, she doesn't really have a family and she doesn't have that many friends or um, she doesn't have that big of a community. You know, she has Richard and, and you know, their mutual friends and, and his family, but she doesn't, she's not that grounded. You know, she doesn't have like a, a home base really and, and she's kind of, you know, she's like figuring out who she wants to be and, and what she wants her life to look like. And when she meets Carol, that's kind of um, not her model, but it's kind of like, I think it really opens her world and her mind to, to what she could be like or what her life could be like and opens the door for the kind of life that she wants to have. When we did the camera test for the movie and I saw Kate in the full hair and makeup and wardrobe for the first time that kind of says everything. I mean, who wouldn't be just blown away by her? She's just this, like, goddess, you know? She's just this magnificent creature, and um, I think Therese has probably never really seen anyone like her before. It's been incredible. I mean, I've loved Kate since I was 13 years old when I saw her in Elizabeth, and. Um, it was really scary coming here knowing I was going to be working with her because I've looked up to her for so long and idolized her and just think she's, you know, beyond anything. Um, and so I've been, I feel so lucky that I get to work with her and that I get to watch her and learn from her. It's one of my favorite parts. I love period films and I've always wanted to be in one. I did a film that took place in the 70s, but that's not quite the same. Um, and the costumes are kind of the costumes and the hair and the sets, it's kind of everything. I mean, you can't really step into the world of the character until you kind of see what all that's about. You know, whenever I knew what my clothes were gonna be like and what my hair was gonna be like, it, that's really the thing that brings it all together for me anyway. I mean, it informs so much about your character, the way you look and the way you move and, you know, the clothes inform the way that you move and Sandy's just, she's amazing. I mean, I can't imagine being being in a relationship like that in the 50s. It, I think it's hard f to be in a relationship like that now in, in many parts of the world. So I can't imagine the struggle that it must have been and the strength and the courage it must have taken to, to be in a relationship like that in the 50s.